Hello everyone, my name is Skalti, and today I'm bringing you a guide on creating a reinforced iron plate factory, creating 20 pieces per minute at 100% efficiency. I hope you enjoy. Okay, so to get this build started, just a quick couple of things to note. I will be using a fly mod, and I'm also using a creative mod, so that way I don't need to worry about having resources on me, and this is just to keep things running smoothly. In the center here, you can see that we have a 6x3 foundation space, and this will be the footprint of our structure. And then we also have a singular foundation border along the outside, and this will be a walking space, and it will also enable us to build up some walls on the outside to encase this and turn it into its own little building. Additionally, we also have a pure iron node over here, giving us 240 iron ore per minute. We have this on an MK3 line, but I do have it breaking out into two separate lines of 120 because at the point in which this factory is relevant in the early game, it is unlikely that the MK3 belt line will be available, and so that way this tutorial makes a bit more sense to be able to follow along because I'll be using the tools that you have access to. So first thing is that we have our two belts coming in below the actual ground floor of our structure here. And that's just to keep things hidden away and make navigating the factory easier. So what we're going to go ahead and do is remove these foundations and then we're going to pipe these into this center area. And you want it at least on the inside of this 6x3 space. And this way we can keep that navigational area nice and clean. Thought that was off by a little bit. Perfect. Okay. If you want to take the time to belt these up so that way everything's perfect 90 degrees, feel free to do so. But all I need to do is just make sure that those connect to each lift. And then we can go ahead and enclose this space. And now we're ready to get the actual project truly underway. One thing to quickly note is that these green foundations that I've now colored will be essentially where our smelters will be going, except they'll be going one 8x4 foundation above here. But before we start constructing all of that, we want to put our walls along this border here first before we start doing any of our belt work. And so when we want to connect our smelters, we want to go ahead and put conveyor walls on these four inside foundations on the long edge of the structure. Do the same thing on the opposite side here. And then everything else can just be your regular wall. Just like that. And then we can go ahead and get these built it up. So we have two lines of 120. We're going to split it once to get two lines of 60. And then again to get four lines of 30. And then of course the same thing on the opposite side here. How you run the belt work in here is completely up to you. You just want to make sure that you're splitting these up into the correct amount. If you really wanted to, you could even just do an array system. So that way it just all eventually overflows. But it's always a good practice to load balance where able without too much of causing too much of a headache. And so now what we need to do is just fill this in with some 8x1 foundations on top to get this all hidden away. Just like that. And when it comes to placing our smelters, we want the smelters to be centered vertically over the conveyor wall below. Pretty simple, straightforward. But we want them to overhang this wall here by one meter. So that way when we place our lifts, they will snap easily, otherwise we will have a clearance issue and we also don't need any additional belt work. So we can go ahead and get the rest of our smelters in place. And then the way we're going to have the output from these smelters is a little different. We're not going to have all eight bleeding into one line, obviously that would be inefficient since we're going to have more than 120 coming out. So what we want to do is we want two smelters going off in their own direction, and this will be for our iron rods. We can go ahead and place a smelter, I'm sorry, a merger, facing out in this direction. 
And then for these six over here, these will be for our iron plates, but we're going to have 30 coming out of each, and 30 times 6 is 180, and we only have our 120 belt lines. So what we're going to need to do is have our mergers being placed just like this, where we have just enough room to put a belt in. And this will allow us to maintain a proper output, so that way we don't have a bottleneck because of our belts. So we can go ahead and get that belted up. So effectively, we're going to have two lines of iron ingots going toward one direction, like so. And when we place our belts for the output to then go up to the next floor, you want to bring it all the way to the edge of the foundation. Let's go ahead and do our iron rods. Okay, just like that. And then building up to the floor above, we're going to take an 8x4 foundation and build that up four times. Okay, this is where we're going to create our first sandwich layer for our belt work. And by that, I mean to take an 8x1 foundation and build it next to the fourth 8x4 that we built and build that down three more times so that way we get a matching height. And then we can delete the two in the middle and the 8x4 foundations that we use to build up to that height. And then we want to go ahead and take these and build these out to the same area that we have below, the 6x3 setup. And when building these sandwich layers, we want both layers to be constructed. Otherwise, when it comes to doing our belt work in the middle using our splitters, we're going to have some clearance issues when we try and build the foundations if the splitters are in place first. Just like that. And now here, we need to prioritize putting in our walls along the outside first, based on how the constructors on the top here will be placed. And so to receive our inputs from down below, let's go ahead and put in our two wall conveyor. So we can just build it on this top foundation first, and then build one below, and then we can get rid of the one on top, just like that. And then on the sides here, on the short ends, just fill those in with two regular walls. And then when it comes to the sides here, based on where we're going to have our output for the iron plates, we want to build three wall conveyor holes just like this, and then same thing, mirroring it on the opposite side. Like so. And then for the iron rods, we're going to have these two smelters coming up and distributing into four constructors. So what we're going to do is put a gap here in the middle with a regular wall. And then put in two conveyor walls. We'll go ahead and put in our conveyor wall for the, for the iron ingots coming up for the rods. We'll do a regular wall over here. I'm leaving this one empty so that way we can eventually get back in and do our belt work. So we'll do a regular wall here, two more wall conveyors. And then before we do any of the belt work, similar to below, we want to go ahead and get our constructors in place. So we're going to have these centered and hanging over by one step, just like we did the smelters. We'll go ahead and bring up a lift for the iron rods, and then again two more for the iron plates. Just like that. Okay. Now let's go inside and do the belt work. And if you are using a flying mod uh, to make building easier, I would recommend turning it off at this point based on how tight some of the belting in here is going to become. So we have our two lines coming up for the iron plates. We're going to take one line and split it into our three over here. Pretty simple. Same thing on the other side.
And then pretty painless over here as well. We're going to go ahead and split this once in the middle. And then once more on each side. Connect all of these up. This is where you can kind of build your way out so that way you're not building anything that's going to restrict you from easy movement. Connect it down just like that. And then we can go ahead and close this up. So now we have our second floor ready to go. We just need to get this build it up to build up to our third floor. So because the iron ingot to iron plate uh, trade is 30 to 20, we're going to have 120 iron plates coming out. So we can just do a singular output. And again, building to the very edge. And then same thing with our iron rods. Make sure this is getting sent in the right direction here. Just like that. So far, looking pretty good. So this time, when we build up to our next floor, we're only going to take an 8x4 foundation and build it up three times. And then build again on the side and build our 8x1s down three more times. Delete everything else. And now we have our sandwich layer. Go ahead and get this built out. ready to go ahead and get started building our constructors for the iron screws. So for the screws, we're going to need six constructors and the easiest way to do it is to just go ahead and build it along a singular side and because we're going to have an excess amount of screws coming out that will bottleneck if we use a 120 belt speed, we're going to need to be able to divide it up similar to what we did with the ironing gets below for the iron plates. So we're going to go ahead and get our conveyor wall set up over on the side here. One for the rods coming up. And then over here, we're not going to be receiving the iron plates. Those are actually going to be skipping this floor since this is just for screws. And I also made it so that way I can't go on the inside, so don't forget to leave yourself a gap. And so then on top, we just want our six constructors. Get these belted. Now we'll go inside and do the belt work. And again, pretty painless. We just want to split up this one input once and then twice. And also, when placing your splitters, make sure you don't build any closer than the center here. If you build it one step too far, you're going to have a belt that cannot be constructed based on its design. So we'll go ahead and take off our flying just in case we enclose ourselves. Oh, we need to <laughs> bring our iron rods up, actually. My mistake. Okay, so 
So now we can bring this to here. Just like that. Almost done. Almost done, guys. Now for the outputs, we're going to do it again, similar to how we did the smelter outputs down below. But one thing to note, so on this side, we have our iron plates coming up. So we want the output for these screws to be on this side here. And to avoid any kind of clipping issues, what you want to do is the three furthest constructors from where the output will be going up to our next floor. You want to build the mergers far enough away so that way they again line up similar to how we have this two wall conveyor here. And then on the three closest, bring them in that line up and you'll have just enough room to put in some belts. Similar to the floor below, below, we bring up 8x4 foundations three times and then get our sandwich layer in place. Oops. And then here's where we'll bring up our iron plate. So we'll go ahead and do a single wall conveyor on this side. We'll bring this all the way up and then on the opposite side do our two wall conveyor and then rather than placing our traditional walls like this we're actually going to be taking these two wall conveyors and putting them on each of the short ends like so and then on the long edge is where we're going to be bringing in the regular walls. And that's just because the assemblers are a little larger and it lines up a little nicer when we build them on the short end. So we'll go ahead and get those in place now. Get our lifts in place. And then for the belt work in the center here, this is where it can get a little interesting with how we're going to be splitting some things up. We go ahead and take off fly mode. So for the iron plates that we have coming up, let me go ahead and split it pretty close to where it's coming in at. And then we're going to run it to the far edge over here. Also something to note real quick, based on how we need to align these splitters here, you can kind of see it's clipping into the wall. So we actually want to fill this one in so that way we can put our splitter in place. Otherwise we'll have a clearance issue. And so we already have our iron plates set up. We can go ahead and get these belted in. And then for the iron rods, not too complicated. We can go ahead and bring in a splitter here and here and again it doesn't need to be super clean inside of here you're we're never gonna see it 
Um, so it's just a matter of making sure that all the bell work is just simply distributed evenly so that way there's no issues with any kind of balancing. And so then right here in the middle, if you want, we just build our way out. Helps if I have flying on. And then we can go ahead and enclose that. And so now everything is distributed. And now it's just a matter of getting our outputs for the assemblers completed. And that is ultimately wherever you decide to have that be, I personally just have them running off the short end here. So I'm going to go ahead and just take two mergers leading into that direction. And then from all the way down below, if you want, what you can do is run a conveyor lift leading out on a singular side. So I'll go ahead and put a conveyor wall in here. And then in order to ensure that the conveyor lifts actually have the proper direction of which way the items are going to be going, it's recommended you build at least one belt leading out so that way it forces the output of the belt to be on the bottom. Build it up to the height that we need it and get it all connected. And ultimately that's pretty much it. You can run power however you like using poles uh, in the early game is likely going to happen but if you do have the conveyor, I'm sorry, the power uh, wall attachments from the awesome shop that'll definitely keep things running clean so that all that's left now is just to put in the final touches of aesthetics but ultimately this is a 100% reinforced iron plate factory. And when it comes to the finishing touches, something that I really enjoy doing is using glass. Obviously that definitely causes a huge performance hit depending on the machine you are running on. But the glass just, I like being able to look inside and seeing the entire structure. So what I'm going to do is just pretty much fill in these exterior walls with glass put a glass ceiling on top and then do some electrical work. Alright, and that completes our build. I hope you guys found a lot of value in this tutorial. If you did, please feel free to leave a like, subscribe for more content in the future, and please, if you have any feedback on how I can improve to deliver this information to you guys better, leave a comment below. This is my very first tutorial video. I'm very excited to get this out here for you guys and see how you guys receive it. So, thank you for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.